sat there and listened to me and it was something I was very appreciative of. I don't have a lot of people that can listen to me without telling me what I'm saying wrong or telling me that I should not think about it. I mean, my mom and dad passed while I was in prison. I couldn't go to the funeral. Brittany was somebody that accepted that and didn't tell me that I was wrong for thinking about it the way I was thinking about it. She has a long history of mental illness. It could be some borderline personality disorder going on with Candace and post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. And I could do my best to talk to her and, you know, like, help her out, but it's, it's extensive. I need a sharp and these guards have like they don't know how to do it. I have my days, but that's when I try to stay away from everybody. I sit at that table for six hours except for when we eat. And when we take medicine and I call it, I don't bother nobody. <laughs> they don't let you do it? No, no. Hell no. Get in the shop, it's out of mind. Ain't no telling what's going on. I still can't get nobody sharpen my color pencils. Every time I ask somebody to sharpen my color pencils, I don't have time. Or I'll be back to sharpen them, and then they just don't sharpen them. It's just something that I'm able to calm down with. It's something that. I like to do and being able to put like the colors that I put on the picture on on the pictures, that's my feelings. And I can't do it because nobody wants to sharpen my color pencil. Okay. Oh Anybody who watching this, get you a job, man. You feel me? That's one of the most best ways to stay out the way, to keep you out of trouble. And don't allow, don't just go for anything, you feel me? Stand on your decisions, make your own decisions. So it's interview time, huh? Mm -hmm. Y'all gotta have some good questions for me. Me, 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 me. <laughs> I'm Jason, inmate at PCDC. I'm 28. First time I came here, I was 17. I've been here maybe 30 times, or 31. All honesty. You know, we got the grocery, little farmer's market. We got hot sauce, chips, soup, pickles, Jolly Ranchers. I have been in the system all my life. I was in foster care for a lot of years before I got adopted. And my mother was in the system for a long time. She was on drugs, and if she could have been there, maybe it would have been different. But it's like, damn, I'm following the same cycle. And if I don't do something now, I'm going to be stuck in this, in this place forever if I don't change myself. And I'm a father of a little girl. So that's what haunts me the most, trying to make sure, like, I don't fall in the same category as my mother, not taking care of my kids. But it's like when you in a city where you try 100 times to get a job, and out of them 100, only three give you a call back, and only one might let you work there. And then once you get there, 
it's so much that's against you because you always get looked down upon or you always get judged. That's really frustrating. I think everyone should deserve a second chance, but there's a lot of people who don't feel that way and they just shoot you down. And it's like, I get angry and my anger is what caused me to be in certain situations that lead me here. I should just focus on what's good for my child, the betterment of her, you feel me? And not trying to say, forget it or giving up, letting depression win. I'm very loving, I'm very caring, but I don't take I don't like, I don't like to be played with. I'm just not one to stand down or lay down for anything, you feel me? But when I first got here, I was in an incident with the police. Y'all telling me I'm going to the hole. I haven't done anything to go to the hole and I'm trying to explain that to you. What protocol did I not follow that I'm going to the hole? But they didn't want to listen to me. They weren't listening to me. I was pleading my case, pleading my case, pleading my case, basically like a child pleading to his father. Like, Dad, I didn't do it. It was my sister, I didn't do it. And they still wasn't listening. And they just started grabbing me up and fighting with me. So I'm fighting back. But it's like, I'm not fighting to hurt anybody. I'm just trying to not be handled any type of way. And they brought me in here in this pod. It wasn't nothing but mentally challenged people. And they had the bag over my head. They threw me in the room. They told me I needed to get up under the bunk for them to take my restraints off. I'm scared to get up under this bed. What the are y'all gonna do to me? Why do I have to get up under this bed? And it's like, they're not trying to listen. If you anger them to a certain extent, you will get a cell with no mat no covers, and you will be in there for a while until they decide to give it to you. They shouldn't do it like that, but it will happen. Even though we're here, all of us are not bad people. And a lot of people only act out and are perceived a certain type of way because they're treated a certain type of way. So I think everyone should be like, even people who are not having issues with mental health, everybody should have some type of mental health help. Let me just say that. Word up, I wild child. <laughs> I don't want to call somebody a dummy, but after so much of listening to a person, you realize how incompetent they are. And it's not even on an intellectual level, it's just like what they prize in life that don't mean nothing. A lot of people in there don't have no no type of more, no type of self-respect or respect for others. And it's like, you really gotta take a step back and reflect like, these people are not right in their head. So just don't, don't even feed into that, you feel me? Do you trust anyone in there? Out of everybody in there, if I could say I trust someone, I'll say smiles. I'll say smiles. It's like, smiles has good characteristics and he moves based off principles. A lot of people don't move off principles. They just doing things without a proper reason why. And he's not one of those people. And I'll say, I trust my My addiction was cocaine and ecstasy pills. At first, I didn't even really care if I stopped. But this could be your last chance. You know, you get out there and shoot yourself up, you might die. And we don't have people that have left here and they died. Where it's a program here is uh, women's empowerment and recovery. It's helping me a lot, and I love it. The one for where, when I go home, who knows what I might have did. I just need to get into where because it'll help with housing and stuff like that. It helps you to keep yourself focused when you get outside. How are you going to handle yourself? Now that I got where, I'm going home. I got a whole guideline. I got goals. I got plans. I'm ready. I love all the classes that I'm in. We did art therapy, counseling, a class for working, teaching us how to do resumes. And so we get out of here, we can find a job and how to act when we got a job. My name is Tiffany. Um, I've been here for five months and I've been a part of WEAR for four months. My addiction was cocaine and ecstasy pills. See, they let us have the tablets out here and everything. I started because my dad died. My dad is my best friend. So not really knowing how to deal with grief, I went into a use of drugs. And it just kept me to the point where I felt like I was better focused than to just live in reality of what the fact is or what happened. They scared to talk to y'all. 
I don't know why. Y'all the latest people here. At first, I didn't even really care if I continued or if I stopped at one point or whatever. So um, I figured getting in where that it was basically help me change my mind and make my decision on what I want to do. Through the WEAR program, I could start school, which I'm working on this. I want to do this trade at um, Pitt Community College. You have a disability, but the main thing is you have an ability. And I said never, ever let anyone diss your ability. I love all the classes that I'm in, pretty much. You know, you have to evolve in the atmosphere to be able to give up what you're trying to hold back from, pretty much. And that's yourself and your substance abuse. And um, once you do that, you will have empowerment, you know what I'm saying, for yourself to change. And then after that comes recovery. We got to show them that we're better than the atmosphere that's going on inside of you. And not really so much better, like anybody could do it if we could do it because we all women. Right now, I'm prepping for the diet and regular training. People that have, you know, certain diets that can't yeah. eat whatever the main course is. Some people are allergic to soy or have a no soy diet. So, like, this is soy mixed in there and they may not be able to eat soy for whatever reason. So there's maybe a beef fat. This is only beef fat. See? That's a supposed to be. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The 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 Nobody really likes turkey, so everything's turkey. Turkey and soy. Everything's turkey. Always turkey. Turkey bologna, turkey salami, turkey, turkey. That's turkey salad. It's all turkey because of the. Some people are Muslim, no pork. Hot commodity and peanut butter. <laughs> this is one of my favorites, actually. It's not too much to it. Keep you busy throughout the day. Makes time go by fast. If you have a felony charge or something like that, you don't get to be in the kitchen. Or all of them, or trustee at all period. And I guess it's up to the Sergeant Gurkha or Officer Gurkin back there to pass to pass the specs. Be all the trustee working. So this is all the uh, stuff that we do to debate right here, you know. This is like, like the the milk and the juice, and these are the sandwiches that we fix for the, uh, these are the sandwiches that we fix for the inmates and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, the bricks, so, uh, and during the day, they get a hot breakfast, a hot lunch, and at nighttime, they, they, they eat cold. Right, so, right. yeah. I got six schedules, but I work every day. Two o'clock, the eight o'clock, every day. No days off. No days off. All the food I want. Woo! Just on the oh. So I really ain't got to order no food. Did I eat everything in here? All the food you want. And they pay us too, so it's $7 a week. Dollar a day. Dollar a day. I love that. Uh, if we want to be an inmate work, I said, yeah, why not? For one, it looks good. And two, it pays time for real. It really pays time. I don't get to sit and lay around all day. Let's do something my mind more than mine. we
running pretty smoothly though, man. As long as you got everybody working together, we're running real smoothly. It's all about everybody having, everybody working together. <laughs> Have a good work team, you know. Right. She's been working on her business and that shit, it's jumped like from where she had it, she had one paper. Now she got the whole business plan done. Am I, are we allowed to see it? You wanna read it? <laughs> so I was I was thinking of something, what 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 do I really like? What's something I can eat every day? Pizza, fries, hot dogs, cheeseburgers. That's why that stuff will always sell in the world. In my mind, I wanna do something different, something that'll sell that somebody will want every single day. Somebody, somebody, hot dogs. Like, I'm going to tell y'all a secret, anybody around. Like, when I get out of here, I'm going to start my own business. You're going to steal my idea if I tell you right? No. You promise? OK. Show me envelope. Oh. <laughs> so she had her papers everywhere. She kept losing them, right? <laughs> and then when look what I wrote. It say, if you stay clean, you'll see the dream. You got this, Nadira. Yeah, yeah, I got it. And Nadira was mentioning a business idea that she had. And she said that I have it all up here in my head. So that kind of forced me to give her some advice, telling her you should put it down on paper a little bit more. And the advice that I give her was ready for her to hear. It fell on receptive ears. So this is Hot Dog Kevin. This is my, my menu. I started off at the top of the top. I said, hello, hot dog lovers. There isn't anything like having a taste for a good dog and a great dog being delivered here at Hot Dog Heaven. Now, I could cook my butt off. I've been cooking since I was 12. I really, at least all my family, all my friends are like, oh, you could cook, what you cooking? I always did the Sunday dinners and all, but I want to start something different. I want to do this. And then I got the prices right here. You have your choice of beef, vegan, or chicken hot dog. And then I have, like, um, all the uh, prices, and I have my signature dogs right here. And one of them is the Buffalo Stampede dog. That comes with a light serving of spicy chili, buffalo chicken, and a finished topping of ranch. My next one is, I'm naming after her. It's called, her name is Kendra, but I named this Kenya Love Bacon. So Kenya Love Bacon, that comes with a lovely serving of hot, creamy cheddar cheese. And it's topped with your choice of turkey or smoked bacon. The last, the last one is called the Fantastic Dog. She's been a friend of me for the whole six months I've been here. She never, ever faded on me, ever. And she haven't so far, but she really tells her. I mean, ain't no, ain't no wish watch It's like, bitch, it is, what's so what? You know, so I like that. These are my friends, so. The reason why I call this Fantastic is because. Uh, and this is the day of BCDC. And I feel sorry for who think that this is cool. Nothing about this is cool. When I used to get locked up younger, I was the same way. What do I tell them that think it's cool and all of that? I mean, I can't put it no plainer. Either you're gonna die or you're gonna be sitting like me 40 years later just getting it. And I get it now. I, and I know in my heart this time I cannot fail. We've been out here 30 minutes. <laughs> and I, what, you get out of town? All right, now minutes. back to my business. Cause like I said, I'll die for this. Let's come on back out right now. I, I want the light for like a couple, like two more minutes and then we can go back to them. Cause right now it's about hot dog heaven. And I promise you, I'm going to give you a good dog, baby. But you got to train them now. You can't come here and get mad because my dog comes with what it comes. We train it. Put, put your work on it, baby. It's your dog. Train it. Good dog. Hey. It's just a beautiful thing. So even under this condition that I'm under, I'm, I'm, I'm not depressed or stressed out. We just gonna do the best we can. We gonna have fun. We gonna talk, reminisce, you know, and you know, our day just continue to go on for the next day. I just take things very, it's just patience. Just having, let me see if I could tune out. They playing, yelling all day. Let me see if I could just practice patience. You know what I mean? So I, I've been learned that. I've been mastered that. <laughs> I got 
got it on. This is what we do every day. Wake up, dip fed, do our hygiene, and sit down and just yell at each other. That's all bad, ain't it? To me, as in a good day, is a good day for us. When I wake up here, I'm, I'm, I call home to my daughter and things of that nature. You know, stuff happens in it, and we gotta protect ourselves because jail is jail. People get raped, extorted, you know, all that. That's why I said it's a walking graveyard. If you don't pay attention to what's going on in here, you can wind up passing away in here. Your family don't know what's the main cause. Um, homie, this the big bro. Thanks, <laughs> Who are you? Uh, my name is Reginald. Um, a lot of people call me Reggie or Smiles. I'm from Harlem originally. The first time that I came in here in 1993, I had 33 years. I was 21. Back then. The feds had Pell Grants and things you get in college. So college come, I'm like, damn, I'm gonna go business administration. I'm gonna get my, you know, business degree, associate degree. And I just started writing. I just fell in love with it from there. So I learned how to write. And all these stories from me growing up in Harlem and me getting on the Greyhound bus coming to North Carolina or going to DC to hustle or do things, negative things, that I said, you know what? Now I could write about this. And when I got out in 2014, I started self-publishing my books and hustling them, same way I did drugs. Prince Amongst Men was a, the first book I wrote. So now that I'm back in here, it's like, ah. Uh... Went to a friend house to a cookout. Unfortunately, the feds had him under surveillance. And then I was profiled. I was just at the wrong place at the wrong time, you know? So they arrested me December 1st. 2021, so I've been sitting here ever since, waiting to go to trial. I'm the only one be with paper and pencil sitting at a table. That's what I do. I just have patients sit around and look at them guys. I'm writing, I'm just observing. Yo, you take V12, he's 6'3", the big teddy bear, but on the flip side of that coin, he can be Goliath. <laughs> but he's humble. You know what I mean? So they, they, they really characters. So I'm just sitting here writing. But in here, it's not like 20, 30 years ago, unfortunately. Everything is gang gang now, which is bad. You know, everybody's blood or everybody's tripping. Huh? When you get in here, who you call? You're not calling your big homie, you're calling your mother. The same person told you, leave them alone. <laughs> if you want to stop crime, you have to really give us some form of education while we sitting here idle. Vocational trades, that's people going to build in the trades, HVAC or culinary arts, or things of that nature to get a trade. You don't have that here. We just sitting idle in them units. Like you see, we're having them blocking them. He's been here four years. He's been here since he was 18. They just deteriorating in here pretty much mentally. But I still try to provide my knowledge, you know what I'm saying, and wisdom to the young guys, because I was once they age and done things that they done, so I don't shy away from them. They respect that. We're going to get out of here, and we're going to start over again and help support our family and our kids and all that and try to be responsible and productive. Yes, some of us going to relapse and do certain things, but however, these people are really, yo, it's bad. We ain't got no congressmen, no senators. We ain't got nobody that's supporting us, nobody. And that's a fact. There's nobody doing nothing. Getting adjusted to my, you know, my new area and, you know, being inside the pod. And I'm just feeling people out, like I'm looking around, I'm trying to get familiar. I'm trying to feel the energy of people, the vibe that's going on. And do That's what he said. That's what you need, that's what I got to there's no one person that runs the dorm. It can't be. Their personalities are too strong. No way. They do what they want to do. You don't have a temple. You don't have a temple. And who's going to get you? You're going to eat No matter where you are, no matter, no matter what situation is in, that's a bad situation. We ain't in the street, man. Did you eat? Did you eat? Did you eat? Did you eat? I thought, what's the name? Did it? Sean, before you left. 
This program has introduced me to a, another way of living and surviving. But boy, you done went in deep already, man. It's gonna go back anyway. Nah, man. Sure. Nah. 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 <laughs> I am surprised that other inmates is helping me. So what does that tell you, you know? I think all the care and TLC comes from the inmates. I'm learning all these different things and all these different ways to stay afloat. I'm leaving here with things that you can't learn just by hearing it. I just learned that somebody could cut hair, breaking down a razor blade with a comb and really get a fade. You know, like I'm seeing that. I live in a bunch of different places in New Jersey, so I know so <laughs> Hey, yo, what's up, with old girl? Um, Chance used to be out here. Um, damn, what's her name? She's a something dog. Uh, she a rapper? What's her name? Dream dog. Dream dog. Dream dog. Dream dog. Dream dog. She used to be in the oil, boy. Dream dog. She used to come down through the oil. She used to yeah. I think he's talking to me now because maybe, you know, me and Vito have had these similarities. I think he started to notice, like, as far as, like, you know, where he's been, where he's trying to go in life. Everything became genuine. It just was like, you know, everything was moving steady. I pledge allegiance to the ball head game. Always forever to keep my clean and forever to keep it shining. Now it's starting to feel like I'm making connections. How y'all doing? Hey, nice to meet you. Steven. Steven. Steven, Steven. I'm Clyde. Steven. Sarah. Pleasure. Nice to meet you. How you doing? I'm doing good. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm, I'm nervous. Nervous? I'm, re I'm ready to go in. Are you? You ready? <laughs> ain't no need to waiting around. You nervous about anything? Like leaving family behind? Or? I got two little ones at the house. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest concern. Other than that, yeah. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to get in. Y'all watched the show previous? Mm -hmm. The participants last season, I seen a part of me in all of them. All of them. It was a cat uh, named Tony. He came in there and he started running like off the rip. Another dude who stuck out to me, he was like, he was he was a little cocky and arrogant. And he played quarterback named Dennis. So, yeah, Dennis. Tall, tall, yeah. Dude, tall yeah. cat. Hello. Hey. How you doing? Hey, how you doing? First of all, I want to welcome you all to Pitt County and unfortunately welcoming you to our detention center as well. Not the first place that we would want you to see in Pitt County, but we know what the objective is here. Mm -hmm. You all are here to become my eyes and ears inside of the Pitt County Detention Center. While you're in there, please stay focused. Understand what your goals are, understand what the mission is, and bring back the intel and information that will make us better. You will be in our detention center for 60 days if you last. We hope that you do. <laughs> but understand this, you will be treated as inmates. We have probably 350 inmates incarcerated at the current time. And those charges range from murder, aggravated assault with deadly weapon. I've seen it all. I've seen stabbings. I've seen serious beatdowns. I've seen death. And I hear you say you're ready. The question is, are you really ready? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Please be careful with your associations. You may become close to other inmates. You are not their friends. You better be ready. Good luck to you all. Thank you.
Welcome to Pitt County. I am Sheriff Paula Dance, Sheriff of Pitt County. I am the only elected sitting female sheriff in the state of North Carolina at this point. I'm the first African-American female sheriff to ever be elected as sheriff in North Carolina. As you know, all jails face issues. We are far from perfect. What we would like to be is as perfect as we can get. So certainly you're here to help us do just that. This is Chief Capehart. He is the person that is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the detention center. I put my full faith in his experience and qualifications to make sure that we're running efficiently, smoothly as possible. With the female population, it ranges between 30 and 50 inmates. Some of the charges that we have associated with our female population ranges anywhere from shoplifting to murder. These charges are very serious and very wide reaching. It could be confrontational. If an inmate shows aggression towards you, how would you act? I would try my best to defuse the situation because I don't want to be in there for real. So what I would want you to do is hit the annunciator inside of the unit to ask for an officer to come down. And officer's job is to intervene and try to resolve problems. Right. And there's no respect loss from a situation like that because anyone could hit the annunciator or the button inside the unit. It's gonna pull on you from day to day because you have inmates to have a host of problems, host of issues, high stress, and sometimes extreme charges. But I want you to think hard about your dedication to the mission. I don't have to think hard. I'm dedicated to this mission because I'm the voice for these girls. They can't speak for themselves. What I will encourage you to do when you come into the facility, take it slow. Take time to learn your surroundings. Take time to study staff. Take time to study the inmates and not just the roommate that you have but be slow and steady with how you go about your day. If you move too fast, it may work to your disadvantage. But if you pace it just right, they may see you as someone that can give good advice to them. From woman to woman, I appreciate your bravery, your commitment to come in and make things better for other women. Whether we're on the outside of the detention center or on the inside of the detention center, we still need that camaraderie, that strength. Those women on the inside will need your strength. While I on the outside have a different role in which I try to help other women be strong and reach their goals. We're on the same page. We're just doing it from different paths. I appreciate you paying it forward and throwing the rope back for other women.